Warning, the following podcast, which contains strong language and mature content, is unsuitable for children or for the faint of heart. The subject matter discussed will be frightening and graphic in nature. Listener discretion is advised. When you want to hear about the paranormal, you get the spooked girls. True crime that makes you hypothermal with the three spooked girls. Stabby snippets will give you dreams. Tara and Jessica will make you. Along with the spooked girls Bring on the slaughter We on that haunted ground The three spooked girls Hey spooksters and welcome back to another episode here on Three Spooked Girls. My name is Tara and as always I'm here with my cool friend Jessica. Hello. Hello and hello guys. Welcome to the first episode of September. Woo woo. I'm excited. Woo. We're in spooky season now. I don't give a fuck. Labor Day's over. Thank God. But if you are new here, hello. Welcome. Thank you for checking out the show. Returning spooksters. Welcome back. Holy shit. This month is also six years of the show. I know. I want to cry. That's crazy. So I had to acknowledge that. And if you would like to hang out with us on social media, you can find us everywhere. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, YouTube, YouTube. We have YouTube. Some people don't know. We do. There's like some video versions of episodes there. And then there's also like just regular audio because that's just what happens over there. I don't know. (laughs) But yeah, we do have a YouTube. And if you want to subscribe over there and support us and help us build that up over there too, go for it. But yeah, I usually put them up a couple days, like the day after or if I'm super on my game the same day it publishes, but I have to wait for it to publish before I can put the video. Oh, that tracks. Yes, I have to get the thing from Headliner and the whole thing. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, so Go go find us. We're everywhere. Our secret Satan gift exchange in the Facebook group, Three Spooked Girls Official, is when they hear this, it'll be getting close to them finding out. Oh, yeah. Actually, because this one goes up, what, the 4th? Thursday. 5th. The 5th. Mm-hmm. The 5th. And so it closes Ooh, the 6th. So if right now, if you're like, I want to do this, you have till midnight of the 6th and we said this there is no like saturday morning hey i forgot i want to do this i am staying up at midnight and i am closing out pacific time so you east coast people you had extra time technically it's true so it'll be midnight my time but please make sure that if you want to participate in this do this i want to give a big shout out i'm not gonna say their names but i want to say a big shout out to those listeners who signed up and then something has come up and they've reached out to us and they said hey i can't do this i appreciate you it's so great to have it ahead of time because then I can pair people with people who can participate. If you are in that club and you're like, hey, I realize I haven't reached out, please reach out to me by Saturday because that's when I start matching people up. It takes a really long time to match people up. Yeah. And, you know, we do have a really good admin team and mods. So like, please be nice to them throughout this week. I am going to literally disconnect from the Facebook group. Not really disconnect, but I'm not going to check the Facebook group for the next week. I'm going to be honest. Last year, it stressed me out to the point where Tara thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown. (laughs) Yeah, I was a little worried. (laughs) To be honest, some people are like, well, yeah, it was bad acting. But some of it was the fact that like... No, some of it was over the line. I just want to be honest. Like, we understand where you're coming from. We get that it's excitement. But when you're the 15th person that day who's like put a message in a group saying, hey, when do we get these? Hey, when do we get these? It was causing me a lot of anxiety because I was having to stop and like answer the questions or one of the mods or or Tara or Ashley were having to stop and be like, they said this. The way I worked it out, just so that I can explain it to everyone and that everyone's on the same page, is it closes midnight on the 6th. I begin pairing people up on the 7th. That'll take a few days. And then I'm prepping the emails to go out on the 15th. 
One five. One five. <laughs> Just know that I will be sending those out to you on the 15th. If anything changes, the Facebook group will be the place we put it. And this is what I'll do. I will put this in there. I will, I'm not going to do what I did last year, which was like starting to send emails and finished. I'm just going to put a finish sending all the emails. If you signed up and you haven't received one and they're going to your Facebook as well, not your emails, they're going to your messenger. So make sure you check that. And I'll put all of that in the post. Like, please check your messenger. This is why we asked for your Facebook name. So we're going to send them out to you. And then it should be fairly easy for me to start sending them out. Please wait until I post (laughs) that I have that she's done (laughs) that she's done before you post I received it because that's also like another thing that triggers other people who are like, Oh my god, I didn't get mine. So just please wait for the all have been sent post, please. And then make sure you get them out by October 14th. Please, please. And thank you. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for Secret Satan. I think it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a good time. My problem with Secret Satan is everything that I buy to put in a box, I want to keep. Oh, see, that's why I'm waiting till I get my person and I can look at their stuff. And then Mm -hmm. I'll grab like the little things here and there. But I wait to get like their main stuff until I get Mm -hmm. their info. You know, that's true. I'm excited. So don't be assholes, guys. Okay. Love you. Okay. Just leave Jessica alone. It's a a deep cut from like the leave Britney alone (laughs) moment. Sorry. (laughs) Jessica does not need to have a 2007 Britney moment because neither of us have time for that right now. (laughs) And my hair is looking nice lately. So let's not have me have have a breakdown and (laughs) shave off my hair. (laughs) Jesus, please don't. Okay. And if you would like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com backslash three spooked girls for as little as a dollar. You get one bonus episode a month, five and up, get additional video content as that is available. We will be featuring some spooky, fun people this year for Spooktober in our Vital Conversation series. So keep an eye out on that. Five and up people are the only ones that get the video version of those. But Everybody else, obviously, of course, we'll have those here. And we have a repeat guest. I'm not going to say who yet. But I am so excited. And we have other guests that have been confirmed. And I'm like, ah! like, I'm freaking the fuck out a little bit about it. I'll be fine when we record. But. Oh, I know. I, I also am really excited. So much excitement, guys. Like, I, I know you guys can't tell. Guys, my excitement level right now is a little on the low because Tara knows this. I worked seven straight days last week and... I am exhausted. It's okay. I'll be loud for the both of us about it. I mean, it's I can fine. be loud as well, but I'm going <laughs> to take this moment to be like, yes, but also like, yes. It's like a golf club, but a yay. <laughs> All right. And if you are a fellow reader like Jessica and I, you should join our book club. We have the Spookster Literary Society. It's our little virtual book club in the book clubs app. And it's been really fun so far. We've had two meetings so far. And yeah, it's just been really good. And we've been reading some really good books. Oh, for September, I guess this would be a great time to tell everybody else. We're reading The Lost Apothecary. Kind of get us in the mood for spooky season and whatnot. I'm excited. I'm finishing up a different book before. And then I'm going to start that one. I'm excited because I owned the book already and was like, finally... I know. If you guys, okay, I have to say this. If you guys haven't seen Tara's new, like, TikTok or on, like, Instagram, her reel of her new, like, physical TBR bookcase, Mm, mm -hmm. it's giving me the vibes I really want in my life because I need this. You know when you see something, you're like, I didn't know I was missing it. But, like, honestly, guys, I'm obsessed. I'm, like, staring at it over her shoulder right now. And I was like, I need my thing to arrive so that I can build it and then (laughs) do this. Well, you want to tell them what it is? Because they some people might not know oh, like, right. what the bookshelf was for. <laughs> so they're just like, okay, cool, Jessica. <laughs> so before she just, you just had like your favorites or like your... I just had random books and yeah. stuff in there. It was a mess. She goes out, she cleaned it out. It's all like, I love those videos where like you see someone do a project. Like, I love it. She took all the books out and then she put all of the physical books she's intending to read and put them in there also with her like fun, spooky tchotchkes and all that kind of stuff in there. And it's just kind of like very intentional like these are the books I want to read and it was funny because when I was like watching her do it I was like you were supposed to read that book already I finished that series I have been waiting to talk to you you know which one I'm talking about and I'm like I've been waiting to talk to you about this book I know 
I don't even know. Okay, it's Twisted Hate, mm-hmm. but it's from the Twisted Love series. Okay, apparently we're just going to talk books for a second. Books. That's fine. That's fine. But like, I don't know why. I loved the first two so, so much. Like the second one is my favorite so far. Oh, yeah. I think it's just one of those I kind of just, it, it's just, I, f- I just forget. I love them all. I Yeah, I'm like, I have to read it. And then I have like the book club book over there and all my tarot stuff and my little mini Amityville horror house is in the middle. Yes. I was trying to figure out if that was the Amity house or if that was the house from Hocus Pocus. I wish. That would be so cool. I don't know why it was giving it that vibe. No. Okay. So what it is, I can't even remember the company name right now because I'm awful. Okay. So guys, think like Christmas Village houses, but these are like real haunted houses and buildings and stuff because I have a I have like two more and one's like another house and then one's like a fort type of situation castle which I actually moved up with my other ghost face stuff and Annabelle and Beetlejuice so I was like that fits the spooky vibe I'm gonna have to put a cat pillow on top of mine when I get it because you know the cats are gonna be like I would like to sit here yeah we're gonna do a little intermission and we will be right back Okay, Spooksters, welcome back from that brief intermission. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm assuming Tara inserted some sort of music in the in the interim. <laughs> Something there. And uh, <laughs> well, here's the thing. We were discussing on our little in- intermission how We've been requested to show a little bit more of our personality. And so we're going to do that this episode. We had something else planned, but this is true to Tara and I's friendship is that sometimes life happens to us spur of the moment. And so we're just going to kind of do like life updates. We're going to talk about like kind of end of summer where we're at just, you know, yeah. we might talk about more about books. We might talk about movies. Like I want to talk about how fucking excited I am that Beetlejuice 2 comes out on Friday. I know. All this stuff. So I know. We're just going to do that. I did a post to ask for Q&A questions. Oh, I did see that. For us. Yes. Technically, that was my plan for the episode that goes up the week of our anniversary. But we could also do it now. I also really feel like answering questions for people will be great. Okay. I'm assuming that people turn them in. Oh, yes. I just didn't know, like, if you wanted to still keep that separate or if we... No, we can do it here. Oh, okay. I'm fine with that. Ooh, there are nine responses in here. Sweet. I also love the idea of having a books and bullshit like segment like once a month where we like take five or 10 minutes out of an episode and just kind of talk about like what we're reading and just, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh. First question got answered already. Skylar asked, have we ever thought about putting the podcast on YouTube? We're there. We're there. Three Sweet Girls on YouTube. I'm pretty sure. Yes. It's all linked. Everything's linked. <laughs> okay. What is the sc- what is the scariest thing you have ever experienced? Childbirth. Childbirth. That was mine. You also have a great one as well. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Oh, well, your the one I'm thinking of is also my the second scariest thing I've ever experienced and that was uh you almost dying. Oh yeah, no, I almost <laughs> died. <laughs> oh yeah. I know I've talked I think I may have talked about it on Patreon, but 
Uh, in 2021, I almost died. Like, it wasn't like... It's not like, oh my god, I tripped and di- almost died. Like, no, it was like genuine. I know that I can be dramatic and I know that I can be like, oh my god, I almost died. But like, literally in the hospital, blood sugar is like 710, should have been in a diabetic coma, should have died in a diabetic coma. Just so that everyone knows, I'm doing great now. I actually have a totally different type of issue. I have the opposite of high blood sugar. I have too low blood sugar all the time. So super fun for my life. Please, you guys can send me sugar this year because (laughs) I can have it. (laughs) Yay! (laughs) But basically, if you guys have been with the show for a while, you know that I was married. My ex-husband and I were like just trying to have a family which led down to some like reproductive health issues and I got put on an like an oral birth control that basically because I have polycystic ovarian syndrome caused me to become insulin resistant. I became insulin resistant. So like because I already had low blood sugar because I have something called hypo uh, or reactive hypoglycemia. So because of that and because I don't eat a lot of sugar anyway, I was doing quite fine. And then I got really sick. Like I caught food poisoning. Tara and I had recorded. I got food poisoning. Then I caught the flu. It was this whole terrible thing. And I drank nothing but Sprite for like five straight days. And it caused my blood sugar to spike and I almost died. I think that was the moment that I realized it was really scary is when my ex-husband said, I can see your heart pounding in your chest. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I I mean, that was so sarcasm. <laughs> it was yeah. not cool. And I didn't even know what was going on. And I remember I said to him, like, make sure you tell Tara what's going on. So, like, they never really talked. Like, they, I think a couple of times they had a conversation via, like, my phone. They'd, like, text or something like that. And, you know, obviously, like, around our wedding and stuff. But, like, I'm assuming he called you? Yeah. So, yeah, he called her. Didn't call my brother. No. Because he assumed Tara would call my brother. But why? Why would she call him? She would obviously assume. But you know, the really fun thing is that she she told me that she's like, yeah, I even thought like, maybe I should call Bo because like, maybe he didn't. But then he was like, no, he would. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, no. So I almost died. Yeah. That was like a whole different type of scary. And, you know, Mm. and when I was like, when I thought the scariest thing that ever happened to you, I was thinking about my black eyed kid moment. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, yes, that is that is very scary as well. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, almost dying is probably like actually legit scary. But your scariest moment literally gave us bug. So yes, yeah, no, that was just scary because just it's childbirth's gross, but it's fine. <laughs> she's here and she's twelve. So <laughs> yeah, she's twelve. <laughs> Okay, so this is from Juliana, and she wrote, How have aspects of your lives changed since starting a slash because of the show? I've been a listener since 2019, and I'm a huge fan. Oh, thanks. So you're pretty much an OG. Yeah. Because we started in late 2018. Girl, 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 why are you even asking us this? You already know the tea. <laughs> I mean, like, do you mean I'm like, <laughs> how has the show changed our lives? Because that would be just, I have to fucking be mindful of what I say. Because if someone reports it to my boss that I'm on the internet saying fucked up, sh- I'm not, I don't ever say fucked up shit, but like, if I were to say fucked up shit, it could cost me my job. So there's a little bit like more of like mindfulness. Mm-hmm. But since our lives, since this, I mean, my story is that I got divorced. I know that some people have asked in the, the group, uh, my ex has husband took Chloe. I know some people have like been like, where's Chloe? He took her in our divorce. He fucking catfished me into thinking we were going to be friends afterwards and then decided to be a real fucking douche canoe and just took her. Fucking worm. So yeah, there's that. Bald headed worm. Don't care. Do worms have hair? I don't know. <laughs> I love it. Kate, he deserves it. I mean, yeah, he does deserve it. Okay, sorry. Anyway, I promise I'm a nice person, guys, but geez. No, it's okay. Here's the thing. You know when someone is truly your best friend because, like, you can say that shit. And, like, I know Tara is not mean. And I know she's saying that because it's, like, another way of, like, building up my wall of protection around. Like, honestly, like, if your best friend isn't trash talking your ex, are they really your best friend? Facts. Facts. But... I feel like just personally, it has given me a lot of confidence. A lot of my like other friends will tell me that like when I start talking about things that are have to do with like true crime, that I just kind of seem extra confident in things because believe it or not, like public speaking is not my forte. Like I get really nervous. And even sometimes just like in a group of people that I know that I have to like seem intelligent in front of, like I forget, like you'll know on the show because you probably hear it. I don't know if Tara edits it out. I'm gonna be honest. I don't actually listen to us because then I would literally sit there and be 
be like, you said this wrong, you said that wrong, you breathe too much. I know I I apologize to Tara all the time in my head, at least that I'm a breathy bitch. Like when I when she edits, she has to edit out so much. No, I edit you. <laughs> no, but I sometimes do. Sometimes <laughs> you can't help it. Like, because sometimes it's like my breath is a word. I'm very tedious. I try my best. I know. <laughs> I know. But sometimes I'm just a breathy bitch. And it's so okay. like, you know, I think about things, but I'll also like forget words. Like I have been thinking about this lately. A lot of that goes back to like when I got sick. And like, it affected my brain. And I know that. And that's something that's like, I'm working on in therapy is the fact that like, I am an, like, I'm an intelligent person. And when I forget something like the word shampoo, or I forget like, you know, the thing that you put around the bike and you like lock it and someone would be like a bike lock and be like, shut the fuck up. Like, yes, I know it's a bike lock, but like yeah. my brain couldn't come up with the word. The phrase. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been fun. But I would just say that like, I don't know, I feel a little bit more confident about my life and it's something that I really love and it hasn't always like at least Taryn and I both know it hasn't always been the easiest journey. Like sometimes like there's a wall and a fatigue and we want to quit and we want to like yell at each other and we want to like be like, fuck it. I don't want to do this today. But you know, it also is like, we love you so much, our listeners. Mm -hmm. And so I would say just in like the last year, we've kind of started giving ourselves some grace and being like, you know what? Fuck it. We can take a week off or we can play an old episode or we can, you know, not have to do a deep dive every other week. Right. That kind of stuff. And and know that you guys will be here when we come back and do that kind of stuff. So, yeah. What about you? I mean, quite a bit has changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole gambit. All right, let's let's go through the cliff notes of my history since the show started. So when you guys first met me, I was living in Alaska and I was married to my ex. And then flash forward to 2021, I left after eight years of being in an abusive relationship with him. You guys were amazing because people kept prodding me to do like a um an Amazon wish list and I very much am not like I don't like talking about anything. Like I'm very very private. So I did that and it helped so much. And I think that was like the weirdest thing. I was just like strangers on the internet like love us and love me like this much you know so it meant a lot and obviously like people bought stuff for bug too and it just i can't say how much that helped and how much that meant to me so that happened well you specifically i'm sure you may or may not remember i started talking about like my sexuality and stuff when we did aaron hernandez which i'm like there's a new doc and i'm like oh my god i want to watch it that was a big time for us i think yeah when you came out as bisexual because that was something you had told me and it felt like a secret you had only told me yeah and I was and am still so fucking proud of you because that's the shit that like people don't realize like it's a like it's 2024 and when that happened it was like 2020 or 2019 I can't remember but it was like yeah somewhere around there it's still a really big thing when perceived cis straight woman suddenly comes out as not and it can be taken in the wrong way like people could have just been like fuck it I don't want to listen to her anymore it's a big deal and to do it on an episode where you're talking about someone who murdered someone and basically coming down to the fact that like his sexuality played a part in this it was a big deal and i still to this day am so fucking proud of you yeah it's definitely a series i still think about so then that happened and then um like you know left him whatever and i am remarried i'm remarried to a woman you guys even newer listeners probably know about her by now because i mention her all the time so i married shannon and she's great and we love her mm -hmm. but we moved from alaska to oklahoma and that's where we've been for the last like almost like year and a half or so now and yeah i mean it's been good i decided to go back to a standard job versus continuing my editing business just because it was something that was stable and i ended up really enjoying it i'm still there so we're just doing the thing and we're still here and we're still gonna be here like we committed to a festival next year guys like obviously we're not leaving don't think that's <laughs> the case that's not the case Oh, no. <laughs> Which I'm also very excited about. Like, this is just something that Tara and I have been talking about, like mm -hmm. wanting to do festivals and wanting to go to, you know, like true crime yeah. conferences and things like that. And 
And paranormal stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited about it, like going and doing a conference. And it's in New Orleans. It's in New Orleans. We could go do spooky shit. Right. On top of it. Like, I mean, Jess and I, okay, here's the thing. Jess and I are going to, we're going to. If you show up there and you want to come with us, then you do that. Right. It's like if enough of you guys are like, hey, we're going, we'd love to do a meetup. Tara and I've talked about doing meetups all the time. Shit. Even if it's just one person that's like. We'll do a meetup. Tara, Jessica, please. Fuck yes, we will meet you. So yeah, if you guys end up going to that, because I know, I know, everybody knows, everybody, we're all balling on budgets. But thankfully, the person that created this festival, like we've got so much time. Right. Let's pinch those pennies. Let's have our little spookster meetup. That would be so fun. I know. I'm I'm really excited about it. I so am. I cannot wait for it. And I mean, the last time Tara and I went to a conference, we like literally were going to a a podcast conference. We did sit on a panel, though. That's what I was going to say. Like we were going and then people were like, oh, my God, you should sit on this panel. And we were like, what? So it was kind of an amazing experience to like, yeah, just be attending something and then be on a panel. And yeah, so definitely check that out. We went with our spooky friends and we went to a haunted cemetery. Yeah, we love doing stuff like that. So like legit, if you guys end up going. We went to the Oakland Cemetery in Atlanta. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to do some touristy spooky shit for sure. We have to. I'm sorry. We have to. Oh, if we don't, I'll be so mad. Like if we go to New, like if Tara and I go to New Orleans and there isn't some sort of touristy like spooky shit, like. We failed. Yeah, we failed. All right. Next, 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 next. Ooh, okay. Trina from Alaska sent us like a few questions. Well, I get so let's, let's see. Okay, so a few of these have been asked before and that's totally fine. But some of these I'm going to still ask again because answer may have changed. Hmm. So what would you say up to date has been your like favorite quote quote episode or series that we have done so far? OJ. I knew that was going to change. That's why I was like, let me ask. Mm-hmm. Used to be Kennedy, but it's OJ now. Okay, well, let's see. I Okay, listen, OJ, OJ's number one, just because it was like, we went so fucking hard. I think that needs to be like, like a yearly thing. Like one of our series is like our mega series of the year. Oh, yeah. I think we should do that. But yeah, I loved that. And then kind of like looking at like other episodes. I really actually, I really liked the Judy Garland series. It was very different for us. Oh, that was good. We did Brittany Murphy, but like... We haven't done, have we done anybody in the golden era that's a celebrity? I don't think so, because we haven't done Marilyn yet or anything. No, we keep talking about doing Marilyn. We will. We will. Ooh, maybe that's It's an be, undertaking. Maybe that'll be our massive series. That has the potential. Also, why is it Marilyn? Like, is Marilyn's ghost out there? Like, I'd really like to know. I would like to think she's having the best time ever, wherever she is. So, yeah, that would be mine. Where are a few places you want to visit, like travel to? I think it's like general, like anywhere. Where do you want to go travel to type of thing? I mean, I say I say this right now because my brother just got his orders, but I really want to go to Japan. Hell yeah. Tara and I are fucking fascinated with like Japanese like demonology, like Japanese like lore. Mm-hmm. And just the culture as a whole. Yeah, but it's also like they took like we're like, okay, we have like a Bigfoot that like walks through the forest and screams. They have a toilet demon that like if you pick the wrong color toilet paper kills you. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> I know. Theirs is better. <laughs> right? I know. I'm like, I wanna I know we need to go. We need to go. Okay, so Japan. Okay. Japan. Obviously New Orleans, I haven't been. I wanna go. I wanna go to Tennessee to the Bell Witch cave like obviously salem is on the bucket list well do you have any like not spooky places you want to go to i think i want to go back to italy i know ben but i would like to go back when did you go to italy when i went to austria oh okay i I was like that's what i thought but i was like oh my god did you go another time and i'm in (laughs) fucking moron (laughs) yes i just i really wasn't working last week i was in italy (laughs) casual casual Casual. Casual Tuesday flow over. I want to go to Scotland really, really bad. Like Tara and I've been talking about what I want to do for my 40th because it's coming up in a couple of years and then her 35th. And so it's like, I kind of want to go to Scotland because I am Scottish, even though my Scottish heritage went down because I'm apparently 2% Spanish, which my coworker Nellie likes to throw in my face anytime. I'm like, this was hot. She's like, okay, 2% Spanish. And I'm like, <laughs> the Spanish is the white one. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's not where the spicy food comes from. That's in the indigenous people. Stop making fun of me. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but... <laughs> Sorry. I want to go like probably a lot of like Viking places. Iceland is on our, li- I know it's on both of our lists. I want to go to Iceland at Christmas because I want to go and see uh, what's her face in the cauldron at the airport. Oh, Grilla. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to go. Also the fact that th- in Iceland, I don't know the word for it. They have a whole word that means to go get ice cream. Like t- it's like a whole, like it's like a <sighs> ice cream outing. Like it's a whole thing. And I'm like, these people just know how to fucking live. I remember you mentioning that damn i can't remember what the word was but i remember you saying that i think you said it in the episode i know where you can find it really easy it's on netflix i believe it's on netflix it's rain wilson it's like he does this like travel show where he goes to iceland oh, it's, in that. Yeah, yeah. it's in that so perfect there we go what about you oh me yeah like all those places you listed <laughs> <laughs> we just travel together all the above uh but i also would like to go actually go to aruba i was supposed to go to aruba i went on a cruise with my family and my in-laws and it was great but unfortunately the ship was not agreeing so we still went to the bahamas though which was a lot of fun tara's now found her favorite way of vacationing it was a great vacation yes i love traveling i love this cruise thing uh <laughs> i booked one for me and jessica next spring and i did not wait for her to say yes i just was like cool we're doing this <laughs> deposit paid <laughs> guys just so you know how this conversation went she texted me i'm at work right because we text all day long because we're best you know we all the time communication i had to step into a meeting and i didn't take my phone with me and then i realized i didn't have my phone with me so it hadn't even been like five minutes when i get my phone because she had said if you want i'll go ahead and book it and i put my phone down grab my stuff and was going to text her when i got into the meeting then i couldn't find my phone stepped out got it in the five fucking minutes she goes i uh already booked it she's like if you don't want to go shannon go with me and i was like no i want to go this isn't a meeting i'm so sorry like i had to like my foot put my phone down she's like okay i was like i wasn't like ignoring you no, I was so scared Jessica was going to be like, um, it was a great idea to talk about, but let's go to Palm Springs or let's do something else instead, which I also do want to do one day. But. I mean, I- I'm d- I'm down to go to Palm Springs. In fact, I was going to be like, Christmas, Palm Springs. Huh? Right. But yeah, but also like, I mean, Tara and I like in all our years of friendship, we've never taken just a she and I like vacation a lot of our trips are we're either podcast related because like we went to atlanta we've gone to new york or it's been like a family trip to disneyland or like my bachelorette party we've never done a real solo vacation and i got us a fucking balcony for anyone that might want to know just saying (laughs) i'm really excited i've never been on a cruise cruise i've been on a boost cruise but never a cruise cruise listen it's gonna be so fun it's gonna be so fun. We're gonna have so much fun. I mean, when do you and I not have fun? I know. We're gonna need so much food. We're gonna be drunk and we're gonna be in great places. So it'll be fun. All the things. <laughs> All the fun things. So that's coming up. So I'm very excited about that. Where else do I wanna go? So I don't even know what else I said. Oh, I said Aruba, which I told Shannon, I was like, we're just gonna go all inclusive so we can guarantee we get to Aruba <laughs> next time. There you go. I want to go to Greece. I kind of am leaning towards Greece for my 40th, but we'll see what happens between now and then. I might change my mind, but that's kind of where I'm at with that. And then, okay, what do you, like, like yourself, do you have any, like, what would you recommend to someone wanting to start a podcast? Well, one, be passionate about something. The amount of people that I know that like a subject and then start a podcast and then, like, it fizzles out. And then also, babes, you got to have thick skin. Yeah. Because people will say fucking terrible things about you. People will make fun of your voice. People will, like, hate the way you talk. People will, like... I mean, the amount of comments that Tara and I have got now, we wear them as badge of honors. But, like, when we used to get, like, one stars because we cuss and people would be like, I loved this podcast but they curse too much i don't fucking care if you know me in real life you know i cuss like people will be like it makes you sound so unintelligent literally the smartest fucking man i know it was my boss not that he ever listens but like he literally is one of the smartest people i know he cusses all the time and like people make fun of the fact that we say like as a pause we're from california we don't say um we say like 
Listen, we're the girlfriend, like, gal pal niche of true crime. We're not Dateline. That would have been a really bomb-ass job to have in a different life, please, universe. But, like, you know, that's just not who we are. We're just here to talk about these horrible, scary, spooky things. And you guys know we're very passionate about, you know, sharing true crime cases. So that's a huge thing, and that's why a lot of people quit. You're not going to go viral in podcasting like you would on a reel or in TikTok. So it's a very different world. It's about longevity. And like the thing with podcasting is it's very much planning. It's I don't do TikTok, so I don't really know. But like, I know that a lot of people are like, okay, I have to do this, this and this today. I've got to film this. I got to do that. And it's like more of a minute or five minutes or whatever. But when you're sitting down to do a podcast, like you have to do your fucking research. So it's time. Like, that's the other thing I have to tell people is when you hear like, let's say you hear a 45 minute episode for Tara and I just like unedited. That could be like 55 minutes because we've said something we need to say again or Mm -hmm. a dog made a noise or something. And so then you have that. And then you have editing, which, yes, you can you can go on places like Fiverr and get editors, but they're not I'm not trying to diss them but like it's not the greatest work sometimes and you can hire an editor i mean we had an editor for years and that alleviated a lot of the time in our life and we could do more which now we don't have an editor so it's kind of like Mm -hmm. you kind of have to be like do we do the same amount of episodes or do we just pump out like what we can do and we both work like nine to fives and yours is not just nine to five so (laughs) that's the thing i will say about uh with podcasting is if you go into it because you're passionate do it fucking do it do it do it but if you're trying to be like i want to become like an influencer what the fuck ever like it's not the place for you it's really not i mean a lot of the podcasts that are there now like not in the true crime but like a lot of people who go viral on tiktok or places and then they get Mm -hmm. a, a podcast they have professional teams right so yeah also with that too with that like give yourself some grace as you start it's gonna suck like we've went through so much stuff like our og 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 ogs so og that the episodes aren't on the main feed but you guys were around when they were on the main feed we used to fucking record in skype the whole thing oh my god so yeah it was quite a lot like the the learning curve in the six years has been insane yes so all of that to say though if you take into consideration how much work it is. It doesn't matter what type of podcast you do. Obviously, if you do like true crime type of thing, like there's research and stuff. Otherwise, I don't know, just kind of depends what kind of show you're doing. But everything takes time. And then you have the editing, like just said, and then you have, you know, everything else. So I would say if it's something you've thought about, like really, really thought about, and you've really wanted to do it, and you're like, well, I know it's actually gonna like take time. You just gotta carve out time. It's like for any other hobby, like type of thing. Like Mm. you You have to just prioritize things. I don't know. Oh, for sure. (laughs) Like, that's what I would say. And then also just kind of like do your research on like tech gear and stuff on like a technical side. Don't get any of those gimmicky kits off Amazon. Actually, like look into it a little bit. If anyone ever wants any kind of recommendations, I could put together like an Amazon list or something of some starter stuff. Just let me know. I think, I mean, my, like, when we first started, like, we had these, like, little snowball things that were okay. And now we both have pretty great mics. Mm -hmm. I love my mic. It's kind of more on the affordable side for podcasting. I think it's like, and depending on where you live, it can ship overnight because mine did. (laughs) Literally (laughs) one night, we so go sit down to, like, record. I think we'd recorded, like, we were going to, like, record, like, three episodes. We recorded one and then we went to record the next one and my mic stopped working. And I was like, what the fuck? And we were like, oh, shit. Like, we didn't record in order of release. And, like, the Uh the episode we needed to record was, like, going out on a Monday. And this was, like, a Saturday night. So I literally, like, found a mic from the same company and ordered it. And it was here by, like, 4 a.m. or, like, 5 a.m. the next day. And I like the roadie mics. Like, I'm a fan. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then editing, like, equipment. Like, get some extra hard drive space. I will tell you some of my fun, like the funnest moments in my life recently have been like when Tara and I record because it's also like Tara lives in Oklahoma and I live in California. And though we would probably FaceTime a lot, we wouldn't FaceTime as much as we do when we record because we get to spend hours together and talking about things that we love that we would literally we used to (laughs) 
Tara and I used to watch like ghost shows and then like text each other after the ghost shows. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just kind of love this that we have. It's similar. I know that's the thing. Like if you two suffer from a long distance best friendship, whatever, like it is a fun way to have extra friend time. And I think that's also what's helped with the longevity for us, you know, six years. That's a long time. That's Mm. a long time. It's just kind of like one of those things where it's like we know of shows that were there before us and they just were like we had to stop because it's just like, I mean, one of the reasons we had to add true crime into it because we originally were just a a paranormal show is Tara and I like look down the road at the longevity of it and we're like, we're going to fucking run out of cryptids. We're going to run out of whatever real soon. And you know what Tara said, be passionate, make the time. It has to be a priority if you want it to be like a show show. So yeah, for sure. So a lot to think about as you go into it and also know it's an investment for sure. Mm -hmm. And if you are like me and your best friend texts you out of nowhere to do a podcast, do it. It's the best decision I've ever made. 10 out of 10. Recommend. She wrote me a novel and I wrote back, okay. (laughs) Okay. Okay, so (laughs) our next one is from Cortland, who is from the Up All Night podcast, who's one of our OG friends. They've done Goosebumps, Are You Afraid of the Dark? And now I recently sat down with them and recorded, and they're on Tales of the Crypt. Oh. Right? So fun. So fun. So he asked, what are your favorite dishes to cook or to eat? Oh, for me right now, I am literally because I have ADHD and like one of the side effects of ADHD or one of the thrills of ADHD is that you get super monofocused on one food or hyper focused. And for me right now, that would be sweet and spicy Korean chicken. I don't know how to make it, but I literally eat it like at least two to three times a week. But my favorite to cook Here's the thing. I either like make mac and cheese and I'm like, I hate my life or I like make beef bourguignon. Tara knows me. I have no like, I'm a horrible adult in the fact that I don't know how to cook myself a basic meal. Yeah. Okay. Can we just blame my mom? Like Tara knew my mom. Like my mom literally was that lady who is like at six o'clock every night sat down with like a table full of food. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that for one person. My mom taught me to cook for yeah. a clan of 10, even though there's only <laughs> four of us. Oh. <laughs> What about you? Well, I prefer to bake over cooking. So my current, well, I haven't, I haven't baked in a little bit, but I got super into sourdough while Shannon was on deployment and I've gotten pretty good at it. So that's kind of like one of my favorite things to make at the moment, but Also, super just recently, because Labor Day weekend and stuff, we went and had dim sum and that was the first time I had it. And I've obviously had like some of the food items and stuff, but I've never been to a like dim sum place. And um, that's like my new favorite thing. And I'm like dreaming of going back and dreaming of the soup dumplings already because they were... (laughs) fucking amazing oh my god like she said we're going to get dim sum and i was like oh i want fucking dim sum the area is not too far from the airport so next time you visit we'll have to go (laughs) (laughs) i love dim sum i love like a lot of like asian culture foods i love indian food i haven't eaten in a long time tara had never had it before and because we went to like a cafeteria style like restaurant and i was like oh i want indian food and tara's like i've never had indian food i was like you'll love it and so she fell in love with it i was thinking about that actually the other day i'm not even joking like yesterday (laughs) i don't even know why (laughs) i love thai food give me a yellow curry with like extra carrots and corn and i'm like fucking in heaven i love baby corn oh my god yeah baby corn oh my god okay yeah we just just foodies 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 all right i love food courtney asking the hard fucking questions or not really but i love this were ross and rachel on a break they were fucking on a break yeah they were Like, the fact that Rachel said, I'm going to say it, Rachel says, we need a break. Like, we need to break. Like, we need a break. This is, like, revisionist history at its finest. Here's the thing. Do I think that Ross should have immediately gone out and slept with someone? No. Like, the night that they break up? Probably not. Also, Joey and Chandler, bad friends. Bad, bad friends. (laughs) You're not, like, stopping Ross from making this decision, thinking that he might regret it. Yeah. The fact that Rachel doesn't see why Ross, I mean, I get it. Ross is toxic as fuck. Like, to be honest, like, he's kind of a narcissist. 
He's kind of like, the world owes me everything. He's very whiny at times. He's very whiny. I think what happened is that like, she was definitely out of his league. And instead of just manning up and being like, I'm going to be with her and like, I'm going to put the time and effort in. And it's the trust. It comes down to that for me. It's Mm -hmm. like, he didn't trust her to not find someone better than him. And he saw what's his face, Mark, as better than him. Which ultimately, Ross was correct in his assumption. And that's the thing. (laughs) The reason she comes back is because Ross was right. Yeah. I mean, two wrongs do not make a right. And Ross should not have slept with the photocopy girl. But it's the photocopy girl, like, in the grand scheme of things. That weave your web, like, she's so-and-so's cousin's roommates, brothers, friend. And you're like, I don't even know if that's the right track. (laughs) But like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Can I just say My newest pet peeve on the internet is when those, like, trivia people, like, stop people on the street and they're like, pick a category. And they pick, they pick something and they're like, it's a fucking softball of a question. It's just, like, lobbed in there and they're like, I don't know. Yes, I've seen those. I've seen those. I've seen, like, TV ones and stuff. And I'm like, how do you not fucking know this? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? (laughs) Like... Do you not watch TV? (laughs) You picked the category. Right? Like, why would you pick that? Like, you picked Friends. You picked Friends. You picked Gilmore Girls. And, like, one I was, like, shouting into my phone, like, how do you not fucking know who that (laughs) is? I'm like, come on, people. Ooh, speaking of Gilmore Girls, I know this is a tangent, but, like, Kelly, what's her face? Kelly Bishop, who played Emily Gilmore, came out and said who her favorite boyfriend of Rory's was. Oh, who'd she say? Is Logan. That doesn't shock me. Her answer was, like, very well thought out, but it was more of, like, that she liked who played Dean and Jess, but the actor who played Matt, or no, his name is Matt, the actor who played Logan was mm-hmm. just, there was just something about him, like, the way that he kind of came at the character was, like, yeah. so good that she, like, genuinely believed he was Logan, and the other one, she could kind of see the facade of, like, who they were creeping into the character, uh-huh. and I was like... I love that. And also, Matt and I have the same birthday. And I love him. I would leave any spouse for that man. (laughs) Oh, my God. Okay. This is from Raven. If you woke up and discovered you were a cryptid, which cryptid are you? Is this the cryptid you would want to be and why? How do you envision your life as a cryptid moving through a capitalist society created by humans? Oh, God. Wow. She's given us a whole origin story. (laughs) Don't be a unicorn. Ah, yes. Yes, of course. Or a mermaid, because then I would be like, you know what? I got to hang out by a pool all day. Oh, my God. Can I be a Yule cat? Because, like, they're fucking huge. Oh, yeah. Just don't eat me, please. No, I won't eat you. It's fine. Thank you. I'll just eat our enemies. It'll be good. Oh, I love this. But see, but can I be like, can I shapeshift into a human sometimes? I also want to be able to, like, I'm taking this seriously, and I want to be able to be, like, a unicorn. But also, like, unicorns can't drive cars. But also, just have everyone in my life, like, adapt to me being a unicorn. So, like, my office is converted so that I could fit in there. Oh, my God. I love this. And that somehow I can, like, figure out how to use my computer still Uh and have the ability to to talk. Yeah, I can see your voice coming out of the unicorn. And just, like, a chicken pecking. And it'd be just me typing with my horn. No, you'd use your little hoof. (laughs) No, but, like, your hoof is solid. It's a cartoon. You couldn't, like, type. No, listen, listen. This pretend series that's never happening is going to be, like, an adult animation type of situation. So, yes, it can use the fucking mouse with its hoof. (laughs) Well, no, I could use the mouse, but, like, to type, I'd have to peck with my horn. Mm. I feel like, though, you would have, like, you like, because you'd have, like, something to, like, <laughs> type with. <laughs> like, attachments? Like, I could stick my hand in something? Yeah. And then, like, like, chopstick? Yes. Poke up. <laughs> really bad, like, tape job with chopsticks. I love it. Okay, cool. Nobody steal our I- amazing ideas. Okay, thank you. <laughs> This is what, like, what is that, like, on Cartoon Network when they did those, like, adult animations? Like, this this is what they need to be. I love this. Okay, so I don't know if they're really a cryptid. So I'll pick one now. Would you consider a vampire a cryptid? Probably not, right? I think we've done vampires as a cryptid. Oh, my God. Okay. I kind of want to be a vampire now. Well, we'll do vampires as the alternate, but I'll go with... Or a werewolf. Ooh, I, I got the werewolf expansion for Sims 4. I haven't tried it yet, though. 
Fuck, that's hard. Okay, if we're going with like the core ones, I'll just say, I'll just be like Mothman. I'll just be like a mothy. I got a booty, so I can be a Mothman. I got a butt. It's fine. You do love Mothman. So there we go. Did I answer the previous question? I also want to go see the Mothman statue and put a quarter in its butt. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, that's also bucket list for sure. We got two more. Okay, so this next one's from Moon. And they asked, what case has stuck with y'all the most? For me, it is literally, I want to say it was the very fucking first stabby I ever did, or it was like one of the very first stabbies I ever oh, did, yeah. was a story about Heather Elvis. She was a girl from North Carolina, I believe, and she went missing. She was having an, like an affair with a married man, and she her car was discovered at a boat launch with like her keys and stuff in it. And she had been talking to this guy and there was like a positive pregnancy test. And the great thing about this, not it's not great because obviously she's been missing and they've never recovered her body and they don't know what happened to her. And a million things could have happened to her. She could have been like taken like into human trafficking and things like that. But the people they believe to be responsible for it, they uh, are incarcerated. And actually in their state, they have, uh, there's like a law that they have like a, a whole year to like give information and they never did. And it would have lessened their sentence. It's actually like if you go on my TikTok, it's like one of the very few cases, like it's the only case I've done full out on there. It's like the beginning of my TikTok, uh, which doesn't have a lot. But yeah, it's yeah, it has stuck with me because she was just a, like a girl who's a waitress and she fell for the wrong person and shit spiraled out of control. And Sydney and his wife, like his wife, I can't remember her name. We'll call her Trash. Trash would like harass her online and shit. And like his truck was seen going towards the boat ramp that night and all of the shit. And then they were like cleaning it out the next day. They were cleaning it out with rags and they burned the rags. Sketch. It was it was a lot. So and there were lots like Tara and I looked at like the map of like where they lived. There were so many places where they could have abducted her and taken her back, killed her on their property, put her in the river. There were so many things that could have happened. And I hope that one day the Elvis family gets full answers to know what happened to their daughter. Yeah. Because it's been it's been so many years. And so my heart breaks for this family. Yeah. It's so awful. I think about that one every so often too. Like, bro, nothing else gonna happen to you. Just freaking tell them. Like, Jesus. Right. Like at this point, just it's their ego. Yeah. And I mean, because they were tried for her murder. Yeah. They weren't tried for like kidnapping or assault or anything. They were right. tried for her murder and they had like 35 to life or something like that. If you're from the area and you know something about the story and you haven't come forward, please contact authorities because it's still considered open because they, they've never found her. I just want the Elvis family, like she had a sister and her parents to find like closure and to be able to be like lay their daughter to rest. Because I think like as someone who has buried family, it's very cathartic to like lay a family member to rest and know that they're like safe. Especially in a case like hers where she's been missing for so long, you know? It's been like 12 years, I want to say. And yeah, my heart breaks. And situations like this are, are terrifying because you don't know. And, you know, people were like, this doesn't seem like a good idea. And she was young. And people who are young should be able to make mistakes without losing their lives. Mm-hmm. What about you? What case has stuck with you? So for me, for a long time, it was, and I mean, I still think about this case, but technically it's, I guess, solved now. It was Kristen Smart for the longest time. Mm -hmm. But fuck you, Paul. Fuck you. So (laughs) I'm getting shanked. Sorry, that was that was me. A little borderline, but you know, he murdered someone. So fuck him. And then got to live a life like basically 20 plus years. 26, 27, something like that. Yeah, almost 30 years without any kind of repercussions. So disgusting. Anyways, so that one for sure. But one that is still unsolved that I cover, I I believe I did cover it here on the show because I covered it on TikTok like a couple years ago, uh, is Kyron Horman. It's a disappearance. It's child's case. Basically, there was a situation with like the stepmom and stuff and she was sketchy as fuck and she still is sketchy as fuck. And And she was the last person to be seen with him leaving the school. Yeah. That one is a whole thing. That one is still unsolved. Like, family is still trying to find answers on it. And it's, like, a whole fucking thing. And, like, they even went on Dr. Phil. Like, 
all the shit. Definitely, definitely look into it if you have it. That's what I think about. I see, uh, I follow like the Finding Chiron Horman, like we follow their Twitter. Anytime I see their stuff, I'm always like retweeting it and stuff because, ugh, awful, awful. Because I'm sorry. It's also really hard when it's kids. It is. It's it's so bad. It's so bad. I remember there was a time where we were doing cases and it just seemed like back to back to back children. Because that's the other thing. If you do this kind of true crime stuff, shit can like start to weigh on you like mentally. Mm-hmm. There were times where Tara and I would be like, nope, we're not doing another kid episode. Yeah. And we get it. It's like people want us to share stories because they want answers. But also Tara and I are like crying off camera or like off recording because it's so hard. Yeah, for sure. Okay, this has been a very long episode, so I got one more submission, and it's because mm-hmm. I saw I saw it come in today. So this one is from Gretchen, and Gretchen asked a couple things. Do you, each of you have a favorite ghost or haunted place? I think we can exclude the Bell Witch on that because that's obviously like the obvious choice. Oh, yeah. Unless you want to pick her, which is fine. But do you also have a favorite ghost? cryptid and why and then Gretchen said thank you and congrats on your anniversary thanks for the company to and from work oh thanks glad to be here for you Gretchen um I mean if you want to say Kate you can say Kate it's okay I'm trying to think Kate is like the name that always jumps out at me because like we talk about her being the third spooked girl but I also like you know like at the Whaley house is it the bride like am I thinking of the right house is it the Whaley house Oh my god, all the ghosts are starting to run together in my head. Ooh, it might be... Are you thinking, like, the one where she's, like, or in her wedding dress still or looking yeah. for her wedding dress? That's a Anna That's Anna Baker. So that was, yes. like, went from Haunted Grounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, I liked that story. Like, also, just so that people know, like, on Patreon, we do do our once a month one. But, like, we have a huge fucking catalog because we used to do mm-hmm. other types of things. I used to do... What was it called? Slaughters. I did Slaughters and Tara did Haunted Grounds, which were fun. But I want to say her. Like, she just... One, she was, like, pissed at her dad. Yeah. Because he was like, you're not marrying this motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of I kind of liked it. And that whole house was just kind of also like, like super fucking haunted. Yeah. There was other haunts to it. Yeah. It was like the dress was haunted, but then like a chair in there was haunted. It was just like, Jesus. The house, the property, like, yeah, Everything. so much. <laughs> okay. What about cryptid? See, for me, I like, obviously, I always go for a unicorn because I'm like, you know, but I honestly think that like my favorite like cryptid cryptid will always be Bigfoot because I feel like it's such an American thing to be like, we have a Bigfoot and here it is, but you can't see <laughs> yeah. it. And also just know that there are there are men running around in the woods dressed up like Bigfoot to scare people. Those are like my favorite. My favorite cryptid is Mothman, for sure. I love Mothman. No explanation needed. And favorite ghost besides Kate. Man, Kate's just such a boss ass bitch, though. She kind of is. I don't know. I just like, I like the paranormal in general is the thing. Like, I am always excited with every single place we've done. I think the places like Winchester and Whaley House have a little bit more in my heart because I've actually been there and I've obviously I was with you with Winchester. And then the other one, I think, too, I would say is Lizzie Borden House because that was our first episode as like just us, you know, like official, official, just us and like introing true crime into it and stuff. So those are mine. Was the perfect segue. Yeah, those are mine for me. All right. Well, with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, We hope you enjoyed whatever the fuck I titled this. And it was, uh, we had fun. I had fun. Just, I did too. Just had fun. It was a great time. (laughs) But with that, we're going to go ahead and sign off and we will see you next week. Bye guys. Toodles. Toodles.